Hi, welcome to 7 Facts. Here you'll get to discover some interesting facts about every single country on this planet. We continue with the British territories, but keep in mind that there's an entire playlist dedicated to this subject, so go check it out. In today's episode we'll talk about the British Antarctic Territory, a place considered by the British as their overseas territory. Before we get into it, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to my channel. In return, you'll get to explore the hundreds of videos that are already up, plus two brand new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. You may have guessed that this overseas territory is found on the Antarctic continent. It is by far Britain's largest overseas territory at 1.7 million square kilometers, which is roughly the size of Alaska. As you can see from this map, it has a very specific shape that starts out from the South Pole and then extends out. It's also overlapping territories claimed by Argentina and Chile, but just how relevant these claims are we'll talk about in a minute. Formed in 1962, the British Antarctic Territory is administered by the British. However, since the Antarctic Treaty came into force in 1961, the entire continent is a protected region that belongs to no one. Aside from Britain, several other countries claim sovereignty over parts of the continent, and while a few of these countries have mutually recognized each other's claims, their validity is not recognized by the rest of the world. Thanks to the Antarctic Treaty, the continent is set aside as a scientific preserve with a complete freedom of scientific investigation and environmental protection. There are no mines here since mining is not allowed and military activities of any kind have been banned. Furthermore, the results of any research conducted here cannot be classified. So, in these conditions, as long as the treaty is in effect and respected by all parties, territorial claims bear no relevance. Even though the British area is huge, in fact, it's about seven times the size of the UK, its population is almost non-existent. Roughly 250 researchers and auxiliary staff can be found here during summer, while during winter the population can be close to zero. Even so, there is a designated capital, called the Radara Research Station. Populated by 130 people in the summer and about 22 in the winter, it is a large scientific complex and logistics center with a 900 meter long runway. As a side note, the buildings need constant repair and eventual renewal due to the very harsh environment that really takes its toll. This is true not only in Rothera, but everywhere else in Antarctica. Rotherav isn't, of course, the only British settlement on the continent. Halley is the only other station, aside from the capital, that's staffed all year round. This is, by the way, the station where the hole in the ozone layer was discovered in 1985. There are also three stations operated and staffed only during summer. There's also Port Lockroy, a place that you can actually visit. Roughly 10,000 people come to see Port Lockroy every year, making it one of the most visited sites in Antarctica. Here you can tour a small museum, buy souvenirs and even post mail. Other nations also maintain bases in the British territory, but even so, the number of settlements is extremely low. You probably won't be surprised if I tell you that there's a lot of ice here but I'm guessing you don't actually comprehend just how much of it there is. Over 99% of the territory's land surface is covered by a permanent ice sheet. This sheet is up to about 5 kilometers thick. There is very little precipitation, which actually makes the entire continent a desert, except near the coast, where heavy snowfalls are common. Snowfalls of up to 1.2 meters in just 48 hours have been recorded many times. 
Inland, temperatures can reach a minimum of minus 80 degrees Celsius or even lower, so I wouldn't go visiting the South Pole if I were you. Near the coast though, temperatures can reach 5 to 15 degrees with a plus, but that's just in the summer. Sunburns are also an issue because of the ice reflecting most of the UV lights. Add to this the fact that you can get 24 hours of sunlight in the summer and constant darkness in the winter and you kinda get why there are so few people here. But incredibly, the place is not devoid of life. Many bird species, including several species of penguins, breed in this territory. Microscopic life is abundant and the ocean, while well, that's filled with seals, whales, squids and orcas. There are even three species of flowering plants. Just goes to show that life really does find a way. So we've established that the British Antarctic Territory is a harsh place, but it's not exactly a barren wasteland. But it's also an active place, geologically. In the British Territory alone, there are at least three active volcanoes. Deacon Peak on Penguin Island last erupted some 300 years ago and Petrol Crater about 100 years ago. Parts of Paulet Island are being kept ice-free due to geothermal heat, while Lindenberg Island is in its entirety a volcano, one kilometer in diameter. The British Antarctic Territory is, as far as the UK is concerned, a proper overseas territory. Thus, the place is administered as such. A commissioner is appointed to manage the local affairs. There is a full set of laws that govern the land and there's even a legal and postal administration. However, due to the Antarctic Treaty System, the territory does not and cannot enforce its laws on foreign nations who maintain bases within the area. Amazingly, the territory is self-financing, with income from the sale of postage stamps, souvenirs and income tax, although larger sums of money that are necessary for the research do have to come from elsewhere. So these were 7 facts about the British Antarctic Territory. I hope you enjoyed the video and will leave a like and subscribe. Share your thoughts and comments downstairs and do check me out on Facebook or Twitter. You can offer your support even more by visiting my Patreon page and becoming a patron. I hope to see you next time. Bye.